let's take a look at the vector equation of a line in three dimensions. And there's two forms that we should already know from first year. And there's the vector form, and there's the Cartesian form. We're going to do a little recap on this first, and then we'll look at like a new way that we can write an equation of a line using a cross product. Okay. So don't forget in the vector form, this represents the point on the line, and this is the direction of the line. And when it's in Cartesian form, if you want to go from vector form to Cartesian form, rearrange each of these to, to make lambda the subject, and then you could equate them all to each other, equate them all to themselves. Okay, let's just try a quick example. Um, it says find the Cartesian equation of the line, which goes to the point 135 and minus 104. Okay, so we know a point on the line already, we just need to find the direction of the line. The vector from P to Q would be Q minus P. From P to Q would be minus 2, minus 3, minus 1. So we could write it in Cartesian form, which would be 1, 3, 5. We could use either point. Doesn't matter. The direction, we could because it, this direction we can use any multiple of this, we could even write it as like 2, 3, 1, so avoid the negatives. I think I want to do that. Like the direction of that line is the same as that direction. It would just be like pointing in opposite directions. So we could use it, we can use any multiple of this if we want in this. Okay, so now we want the Cartesian version. Um, so think about the x coordinates would equal 1 plus 2 lambda. The y coordinate would be 3 plus 3 lambda. And the z coordinate would be 5 plus lambda. So rearranging each of these, we could see that x minus 1 over 2 would be equivalent to lambda. y minus 3 over 3 would be equivalent to lambda, and z minus 5 would be equivalent to lambda. So therefore, the Cartesian form would be x minus 1 over 2, would equal y minus 3 over 3, which would equal z minus 5. Okay, let's try one more. Okay, so for the second one, we know that the line Pass to the point two seven one, and the direction is given in this IJK form. Um, first of all, we just want to find the vector equation. So point on the line two seven one, constant sounds by the direction. The direction would be two zero five. Okay, so we have to be slightly careful with this when we do the Cartesian equation. I've seen people do a couple of slightly unusual things here, but just be careful. Like we know x equals 2 plus 2 lambda, we know y equals, well y is just 7, like essentially when the vector looks like this, when you move along the line, you're only moving in the x direction or in the, in the z direction, like essentially y is always 7. So imagine if you, if you drew like a three dimensional axis, okay, the line y equals 7, Well, it's not really a line, is it? It's, it's actually like a plane. There's a there's a plane here, and everywhere along that plane, the y value would be seven. Like that's your x-axis, that's your y-axis, and that's your z-axis. That plane there, y is always seven. So whatever, whatever this line is that we're drawing, it must lie somewhere within that plane. Like the y value never changes. Okay. And z would equal 1 plus 5 lambda. So when we are doing this, um, <coughs> don't don't write it as like y minus 7 divided by 0. Like, don't write that, basically, okay? Like, you, you just say, look, y is equal to 7, all right? So from that equation, we'd get x minus 2 divided by 2 equals lambda. And we get z minus 1 divided by 5 equals lambda. So the Cartesian equation with the x minus 2 over 2 would equal z minus 1 over 5 comma 
y would equal 7. Okay. So with that in mind, um, let's have a look at like it. Uh, it doesn't come up very often in the exam list, but it is worth knowing. Um, now that we know about the cross product, there is one other way that you could represent the equation of a line. And it could be asked, so we definitely need to look at it. Okay, so if you think about it, if we're working in three dimensions, there's the origin there. We've got a line which moves through the three dimensions. And we're looking at a way of like representing the points along this line. So obviously the vector equation of a line is just a mathematically a way of representing these points here. Um, one way of doing it, which we already know, is we can say well, we go we go from the origin to the point A, so that would be A plus, and then we want to move along the line. We can move along, the vector A takes us to the line, and then multiples of, of the direction takes us along the line. But that's what a form that we already know. If we think about now another way that we can represent this, like what would R minus A look like? Okay, so if R represents like a general point on the line, like R is anywhere along this line, A is specifically a point that we know, but like R, when we write the letter R, it just means somewhere, any, any point that's somewhere along this line. So if you imagine R was over here, the vector R minus the vector A, okay, so if we do r minus a we end up with moving in this direction okay think about it if we go minus a we're going that way and then we go r so minus a and r is the same as this vector here just by when we add the vectors together we, we move along them minus a moves that way r moves that way okay so r minus a can we see that it is actually in the same direction as the line? So what would happen if I cross product R minus A, this vector here, with the vector B? So we know we go minus A plus R, it's this direction. We also know B is in this direction. And we know when we cross product two vectors, the answer would be zero, wouldn't it? Okay, so there's a cross product version of, of an equation of a line that we can use where B stands for the direction and A stands for a point on the line. But when we cross product them, it's equal to zero. Okay, we might see this written as because with because cross products we can just expand them out as normal, so that would be R cross B and then minus A cross B. So R cross B would equal another vector c which which is you know a cross b but like you, you can just see it written as a vector here it's not obvious that, that what that represents because it'll be a combination of those two things so if we knew what the point a was we knew what the direction of b was like that would be the cross product of those two but like essentially when it's written in this form if it is written in this form in the exam we need to realize that that there represents the direction of our line okay So if you actually look at the example in the booklet, like it says explain why R minus A cross B is a line. And like this diagram explains why. I suppose if, if we were going to ask to specifically explain, we could say that R minus A is parallel to B and when we cross product. Parallel vectors. The results is zero. Okay. And it says show also it can be written as this, which is what we've done there. So we've just done example one without me even realizing, like I was just explaining the topic, but that's what we initially were asked to do. Okay, let's take one more example on this. So it says show the equation of the line through the point. Minus one, two, three, in the direction two, one, one, two, one, minus one, can be written in this form. So we think about the cross product version of the line. Um, if you think about your diagram here, the point A is minus one, two, three. The direction that the line is going in is two, one, minus one. 
Okay. So we could start by saying that R minus minus one, two, three. Right, that vector, if we do R minus A, we're going in this direction here, this this green direction. So we know that, that vector R minus A minus A and R is perpendicular, it's only not perpendicular, it's parallel to the direction that the line is going in. So if we cross product with the direction of the line, it's 0 minus 1. The answer will be 0. Okay, so we end up with R cross 2 1 minus 1 minus minus 1, 2, 3 cross 2 1 minus 1 and we want R cross this, so that's, that's this, and then we just need to figure out the cross product. Hopefully, hopefully it should give us this answer on the right hand side. Okay, so we'd get R cross 2, 1, minus 1 would equal minus 1, 2, 3 cross 2, 1, minus 1. So cover off, we get minus 2 minus 3 minus 1 minus 6 and minus 1 minus 4 which gives us minus 5 5 and minus 5 okay not a really common sort of style of question this but like the thing with this topic is there's like loads of little skills we've got to show you before we can get stuck into the exam questions at the end Okay, so once we've, once we've done this, we can now look at like how to represent the equation of a plane. Um, and there's like three different ways we need to know for that. And obviously, before we can get stuck into the exam questions, we're going to have to take you through each of those. Okay, thanks guys.